Welcome back, everyone. We now hand you over to our next presenter, John Kirk. John, over to you. Great stuff. Thank you very much. So um, today's talk is about uh, presenting how GSK realized its vision to take global campaign delivery from 30 days to 16 days to 16 seconds. So let's kick off. Um, quick introduction to myself. Um, so as I said, John Kirk, I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at the Inspired Thinking Group, and I was the ITG Programme Director and Board Sponsor, so the GSK Ecosystem and Streamline Transformation Lead. In addition to that work, I'm also a Senior Visiting Fellow uh, for a Global Business School lecturing in Strategic Management and about Strategic Management. So just different mindsets when I'm going through the presentation about how we approach this uh, programme. What I'm about to attempt to do it's not um, a Paul Daniels magic trick, but cover two years in 20 minutes. So it's typically a one to two hour presentation. I'm going to really, really pace it, fasten your seat belts, contact details at the end if you have any questions. So to set the scene, uh, effectively, this is the mission. So when did GSK start this journey and what did it set out to achieve? And this is the only bit I'm going to sort of read through the presentation. Don't worry, I'm not going to read all of it, but this is because this is the exact press release. So two years ago, June 2020, GSK Consumer Healthcare looked to reinvent its end-to-end -end marketing ecosystem. And this was all around employing a single technology platform to connect the entire workflow and connect that whole ecosystem around its operations. This was, again, about part of a much bigger marketing transformation, which I'll come to in a second. And this is around delivering marketing content faster, but also optimizing content effectiveness, not just efficiencies. So the bigger picture, why did GSK start this journey? So what's the purpose behind all of this transformation? For those who may have been reading the news, uh, just a couple of months ago, GSK Group, PLC, uh, separated, divested its consumer healthcare business and listed a new independent company known as Alien on the London Stock Exchange and the New York Stock Exchange. And they do very well financially, if you've read in the news just recently. So it's 100% focused on consumer health, and they have a world-class portfolio of leading brands such as Sensodyne, Panadol, Advil, Theraflu, et cetera. But that sets the context of who they are and what the program's about. What was the vision? So this is against the, the core of the today's talk and topic. This 30 days to 16 days to 16 seconds. How have GSK made this journey? And where are they going next? And this also applies to many other global leading brands that we work with. So just to set the scene around what takes 30 days. So if you take a global brand, 12 channels, 110 countries, or if you take a multi-brand multinational, you could have 12 channels, 100 brands in 100 countries. You know, it's 120,000 different ways of working and trying to manage that through disparate technologies and very complicated offline ways. Typical process will be to get a creative master document and distribute that through email or share files or different ways of doing it. It would take around five days, something like that. And from that campaign, master brands would opt into that campaign and start to deliver briefs back to the different uh, teams and hubs centrally, regionally, and locally. You can see the ticker at the bottom, that's five days, 10 days, 15 days. And this process goes iteratively. You know, hopefully this is a common theme to everybody. And this is around briefs going to offshore production hubs, and then that production, once you get to final approval, is sent to market, and then the campaign is activated. So 30 days is an average. And in terms of enterprise value, everything I'll talk about here is anchored around sort of KPIs, KRIs, so key result measurements, key performance indicators. If you look at offline manual content adaptation, you're looking at minimal control, minimal data, massive complexity, minimum cost control, an average of 30 days. And actually from a a creative campaign must have been distributed to channel activation in market. 30 days is just an average and it can often be much more. Now introducing a system of record or a marketing work management system. So this is changing analog ways of work to digital ways of working in a unified platform and a system of record for marketing. So you can have digital delivery of content, all of that briefing, so that content origination, the content adaptation going through a single platform and that system of record. So offshore hubs are briefed. The final artwork is sent through the system, through the distribution. So you have origination, adaptation, and delivery, and the campaigns are active. So this is setting the scene for 30 days to 16 days. And then you have 100% control, live dashboards, very, very intuitive way of briefing and dynamic briefing, full cost control with an average production day. So still manual agency content adaptation, but a digital operating model. 
And this is where they are going and many brands that we work with are. So introducing this concept of self-serve asset shopping and content automation. So it's, it's effectively that creative automation, but plus in terms of how the organizations access all of that content. So you go into a single portal, shop and create local templates. We call them collections and launch pads. Those automated brand adoptions are delivered to, let's say in this case, 110 countries. And that campaign then is automatically activated. And we say in one day, but actually it's less than one day. It's 16 seconds in the case of GSK. Enterprise value, we said 100% control and live dashboards. We're introducing this concept of an e-commerce experience, shopping content, 100% cost control and ultra efficient in terms of production and distribution of content. 30 days, 16 days, 16 seconds. Hopefully that's set the scene. And I'm absolutely delighted in partnership with GSK and powered by Canopy Cloud, it was awarded the excellence in Mark, the winner, sorry, in excellence in Marcom Technology at the 2022 Gartner Communications Award. And that was judged on four, four criteria. So the first one, execution of technology that has enabled innovative experiences for customers and wider stakeholders. Two, execution of technology that has demonstrated a clear return on investment, that fourfold investment of a pound spent and four pounds returned. A strategically strategic collaboration between all of the different functions within a business but adaptive processes that enable broad ado adoption of new technology. What you can see is the launch pad on the right hand side for Sensodyne, which is the streamlined configuration of Canopy Cloud. There's a short video now, it's only two minutes, and this is James Masters, the content product director from GSK, explaining the partnership and the transformation himself. I'm James Masters and I lead um, the content management system. we would create kind of a single portal for users to facilitate their workflow through so that they have that sense of a joined up journey. I'm not doing one system for this job, one system for that job. How do you create it to be um, you know, a much better experience for them? It's no longer about just signing an SOW and moving on. There's gotta be commitment on both sides of the fence to actually move both businesses forward. There's a culture behind there that's genuine dedication, willingness, and desire to make your clients successful. I think everyone brings that. I think that the selling point or the proposition for my TG was the strongest in terms of creating that joined up user experience. This all comes back to this vision of an end-to-end -end product workflow, being able to house your content, house your toolkits in I kind of call it almost like an e-commerce type experience. As a, as a brand manager in a local market, I want to be able to browse and find the elements of the campaign which are relevant to me, relevant to my market. I want to be able to add it to a basket and then I want to be able to move into production. And it should really be that simple. One piece which is definitely uh, coming up with some of our innovations around the launch pad would be the, the visibility of content that is available to you so you can reuse and drive adoption of content. We're trying to measure the speed of content delivery. So, you know, the, the theory that we have here is today, if a content production brief takes about 16 days to deliver, you know, the aspiration to get it to 16 seconds is pretty powerful um, in the hands of a marketeer. Great stuff. And I think it'd be a timely moment just to say, uh, hopefully some of the colleagues from uh, GSK and Haley are watching. Absolutely awesome team, very capable, brilliant to work with. So yeah, congratulations on the award. So there's five key takeaways. This is obviously a tech forum. Um, these are five lessons from the last two years of things that um, I would absolutely apply to any implementation. Number one, align technology with strategic business change. And this is around staying true to your measures of success. Okay, and what do I mean by that? Clearly, I can't show you what the strategy was, but I can talk to you about how the framework was built over that time. And absolutely, this is fundamental. I mean, I, I cannot emphasize enough about getting alignment between business, procurement and technology. What is desirable from process and change? What's viable from a commercial and procurement perspective? And also what's feasible from a technology and platform and GSK absolutely, now Halion, absolutely nailed this and had a complete um, alignment of a shared vision and commitment, absolutely spot on in terms of uh, the backing across the business for this. 
So building a framework, this is a standard strategy framework, but it's about how you get alignment. So what's the purpose? So who are you as a company? What's your transformation? And that's got to be aligned, as I said, because business procurement and technology. Here's an example, by the way. This is just related to the technology itself. Create a seamless and unified creative marketing operations platform, for example, the mission. The vision, these are strategic levers. How are you going to do it? So plans and budgets, perhaps. Content origination, adaptation, automation, distribution, analytics and insight. And again, more focus around the business paired with technology in this case. And then the values, what matters to you and your product team and your business. So things, for example, such as the human experience, a unified solution, data-driven, data-first, automation-led, for example. And then the measures. Okay, these are just some sort of lean methodologies, but do you want to remove waste of duplication, increase speed, increase performance, increase user experience? And it's important to all facets of the business. So, for example, how much content is adopted versus adapted? Okay. What's the life cycle duration for content adaptation? What's your campaign engagement and uptake? What's the adoption of the technology itself in the platform community? Okay. So that's a, a single view. The testimony to this is if I speak to business procurement or technology and ask them the question on the purpose, the mission, the vision, the values, the measures, the KPIs, will they answer it the same? So if I said to business, tell me what the mission is. Say it's procurement, say it's technology, unless all three give me exactly the same answer, then you haven't got alignment. You want to make sure all of your stakeholders across those six levers absolutely answer all the questions the same way. It is fundamental to a program success in our experience. So takeaway two, build a detailed understanding of your content ecosystem. Very, very complex sometimes, but sometimes overcomplicated. It can be made very simple. So Think about the value behind your ecosystem. Why are you connecting things adjacently or complementary technologies? So I've used the, the Gartner Content Operations Framework here in terms of a, an adaptation to make a content excellence framework. So very quickly, left-hand side, marketing content operations, right-hand side, engagement experience. And before I present this, I'm not going to go through all the building blocks. I absolutely can, or James can. We can go through this together over coffee, contact details at the end of the presentation. Left-hand side is all around marketing and content operations. The right-hand side is how do you get content distributed, originate and adapt, content distribution and delivery into channel. All you're doing effectively is connecting you as an enterprise with your products and brands in different areas and categories and regions and markets through the line all the way through to your end consumers. Okay, looks complicated. It can be made very simple. The left is very much around efficiency and the management of the process. And then the right is the effectiveness and the measurement. Peter Drucker, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it, improve it. We at ITG like to think about inspired thinking and what we call counterintuitive thoughts. So we would say if you can't manage and improve it, if you haven't got effective marketing and content operations, then there's no point measuring it. And a lot of people focus on the right without considering the left in equal measure. And we would say both the management and the measurement and the data is fundamental to getting balance in a content excellence ecosystem. So that's takeaway two. Takeaway three reimagining what your marketing operating could be. So think about how are you working internally or with external partners versus potential for automation. So this is a typical operations model, putting your consumers at your heart, you as an enterprise are selling products perhaps or services to businesses. You work with agencies and partners and then the service of layers. Those services, whether it's internal or external, could be onshore, nearshore, or offshore. In an agency world, you think around six strategic groups around agencies from design, creation, production, media insights, and analytics. And there's some nice descriptions here you can read in your own time. I want to focus on two key points. This is people powered and limited scale. You only scale through people. And then just to debunk a couple of bits around production and media, it's about content adaptation and channel distribution. Very, very simple. And whether that distribution is paid, earned, shared, or owned, it's just getting content into channels and you pay a lot of money to get that done. Now, if you think of the top half is around management of content, design, create, produce. And then the bottom is around that measurement, delivering of content and getting the insights. Looking forward in the next generation, we're at this point with many of the brands now, introduce technology around your operating model, your system of record breaks down geographical silos. So you get a data-led platform, still in strategic levers around design, create, produce, et cetera, but then you start to think about automation and you convert all of those vertical strategic groups into automated mindset from the brand at the start through the creation and the production through to the analytics. You want to be thinking with an automation first mindset because this is technology powered, powered by data, automation led, and it's completely boundless and limitless. Okay. 
So innovate the way you have your operating model and think about who you want to work with and the technologies you want to work with too. So you can either build a model on the left or you can look at the model on the right and future gaze around you know, two to three years time, start that program today. Takeaway four, James Masters, who you saw in the video, hopefully he's listening today, progress over perfection, a, a beautiful phrase. And Edwards Deming said, a bad system will beat a good person every time, or to put it very simply, bad systems or platforms can turn enthusiastic colleagues into frustrated poor performance and prevent adoption of your technology. So how do you get around this? Think dabble. And some of you who do agile implementations and agile enterprise will know about this. What's your demand from the business? So what's the problem from a business or a platform? Undertake a value-based discovery. So will they use it? Can they use it? Can we build it? Can we support it? Is it desirable, viable, and feasible, as I mentioned earlier? Start to do alphas. In this case, if you have the right technology, you can prototype through pure configuration and then add low code if necessary. Then you do your beta experiments and then you've got to get approval internally, small group. Then once you've got the right solution, happy customers, then you scale. So crawl, walk, run, fly. I cannot Again, emphasize enough, organizational change management is absolutely fundamental to making the programs a success. And then takeaway five is about personifying the user experience and the work experience. So it would be human-centered design, for example, to bring it through. And how do we do this? So again, around the Gartner Communications Award, this is the launch part for Sensodyne. And this is a configuration of Canopy Cloud that manifests itself as streamlined for GSK, just to walk you through this. It is a creative marketing operations platform. If you think all brands, all products, all categories, all markets in all clusters across all regions in all languages in all channels is in one technology platform, as you can see on screen. So all of those brands have a single place to go, a single source of truth. Then you have a brand portal about the brand, brand guidelines, brand in action toolkits, all controlled through CMS, content managed pages, digitizing that content. Then you have an enterprise class digital asset management, shopping experience for all assets, product photography, lifestyle photography, pack shots and marketing assets. But fundamentally what sits behind that is media asset management. So master files, working files, content packages, non-marketing assets. You can see where all of this gets brought together in one and manifests itself in one experience we refer to as Launchpad. And this is ITG's active campaign playbooks powered by creative automation with rules-based creative, all of the working files, templated dynamic at scale. And just a quick example, you bring the rules-based data-driven uh, content shopping experience, and that can be for regulated or unregulated content. And here's just a quick example of how you can change, obviously, uh, file formats, file durations, custom text, languages, foregrounds, backgrounds, and then the audio. And just to be clear, this is technology is able to do, obviously, any channel, any file format, any language, any size. So that's just an example of how you bring that shopping experience. There's way more in the configuration of the platform around full campaign planning, marketing workflows, resource scheduling, and then all the analytics and measurement, but I'm not touching on that today. Okay, so in summary, as I said, I've tried to cover uh, two years in 20 minutes, 10 winning lessons for realizing your vision. So in summary, the first five that I mentioned, just to recap, what do you need to do? Align, absolutely fundamental, your business procurement technology. If you haven't spoken to them, speak to them and get buy-in and define some really simple key measures. Number two, build a detailed understanding of your value-driven ecosystem. Do not connect something just because you think you can do it or you should do it or because there's an integration available. Connect something that actually makes a difference to your users and to your business. Three, think about your marketing operating model. How do you want to work? Do you want that manual way of working or do you want to be technology and automation first? James Masters, progress over perfection. Just keep it simple. Through configuration, you can build sophistication over time. And then five, the human experience, blend user experience and work experience. And five Brucey bonuses, how? Configuration is king. Choose technologies that can be 100% configured, as I say, with low code enhancements. Create data-led work flow, key. That flow between business objects, asset modeling and management. Seamless synergy. Single source of truth and orchestration, try and get everything joined up around briefs, processes, operating models, routing principles, assets, objects, content, data, the adoption, the life cycle, the work experience, the user experience, and those platforms in synergy. Nine, elastic enterprise, change is constant, your business will centralize, decentralize, globalize, regionalize, localize, all of the above. And then 
the last one, which again is fundamental, is about the people and the change management is absolutely fundamental to OCM, to your project. My contact details on the left, James Masters on the right. I think we're banged on 20 minutes. So thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. Please get in touch.